Hey, welcome back to my garage. About 35 years ago, I started to put together my ensemble of pneumatic tools. And smartest thing I ever did. Really makes your work a whole lot easier. So stick with me. I'm going to show you what I think you ought to buy first. Hi, my name is Bob, and I love my two-car garage. First thing that you're going to need to have when you go out and start buying stuff, obviously, is a compressor. Now, I suggest that you don't get like the package deal that they sell at Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. I suggest you buy things individually because there's different features on different brands that you're going to like. These two have served me really well. I got this one. It's called the Finney Scout Air. It's kind of hard to find, but you can find it online. But I like the size of it. And and I can lug it around real easily. This little guy by Sinco has been great. It's super quiet and super light. And uh, so both of these are really well. Now, work, have worked really well. Now, when you go out to buy your compressor, you got to consider the physical size of the thing. If you have enough room to buy one of those compressors that rolls around on wheels and has the larger tank, it's really better because it's going to last longer. It has more capacity. So if you got room for it, buy one of those. If not, then get the little guy. I suggest that you do not buy that little red pancake compressor by, well, I hate to mention names, but their initials are Porter Cable. And it just like, it's way too loud. It, you can't even stand and talk to somebody in the same room with that thing running. So, so consider the noise that it makes. I When you go to the store to buy it, I'd have them plug it in and, and show you what it sounds like because the quieter the, the quietness of the thing is really important if you're going to spray use it for more than just uh, nail guns or anything that requires a lot of capacity you're going to need a bigger tank and a little one like this would not work for spraying or anything like that so um, configuration is important the uh, overall pressure that it puts out is important. The capacity is the, of the tank is, is important. But don't forget noise because those loud ones are just a pain. The first nail gun that I ever bought was a 16 gauge finish nailer. In fact, this is it right here. This one's called a Hubbold. And you can't get parts for this anymore. So guess you're not going to buy this one. But it sure did serve me well for 25 years. But... Uh, can't you buy that one. Next one I got that I think somebody actually gave to me is this boss stitch right here, which actually worked pretty well. Nice thing about it is that it, uh, and you can get this for, I think, right at just over $100 at, at Home Depot or something. Nice thing about it is that it uses the straight nails, which I actually like the straight nails better than the slanty ones. And... Uh, you can get different lengths of nails. This, these are like two and a half inches long, and this goes all uses nails all the way down to I think an inch and a quarter. Also has a depth gauge adjustment on it, which is pretty nice. What I don't like about it is that it just doesn't have as much punch as this Senko nailer right here. This wouldn't sink uh, my nails very well into two inch oak. So. It's a good nailer it, for the price, but it does have some limitations. So finally, I ended up with this Sinco nailer right here, which cost more. It was like $185, something like that. It has the slanty nails, which um, is supposed to help you get into the corners a little better, but I really never noticed that it was all that big a deal. It does have the, the depth uh, gauge on it which is nice. So my two recommendations for the finishing nailer or the 16 gauge nailer is either the Senko or this boss stitch. This one's obviously uh, a better price. You're going to use this for baseboard. You're going to need it for crown molding or if you put, put putting together cabinets, it's a good choice as well. So the second nailer that I bought was this little pin nailer or brad nailer it's called sometimes. Shoots 18 gauge nails. 
I bought this next because I needed it next. And this is great also for crown molding sometimes. Little tiny corners on baseboard that you're afraid you're going to split it with a bigger nail. But I got, I've had two of them now, and both of them have been Sinkos. This one finally wore out, but it lasted about 25 years. And uh, then I bought this guy right here. Now, it shoots different lengths of nails as well. It goes all the way down to, I think, three-fourths of an inch, all the way up to an inch and a half, which is nice. And this will hold quite a bit. The newer gun has a depth adjustment on it, which is nice, and it's oilless. I'm not sure if that's nice or not, because sometimes I see little sparks coming out of it, but most of the nailers that you buy these days are oilless. So, my recommendation on the 18-gauge nailer is the Sinco. The next nail gun that I bought was this Porter Cable Framing Nailer. Now, if you're doing a lot of framing, you gotta have one of these. These things are rapid fire. They shoot differently. You hold your finger down and you punch it and it shoots the nail. It only shoots 16 penny nails and eight penny nails. I bought the Porter Cable because I don't use it that much. Uh, there are better ones out there I know. The Hitachi is really good. It's kind of the standard for, for framers. But this one served me really well. Does jam up up once in a while, but I get by with it. So for me, this Porter cable worked fine. This is a 21 gauge micro nailer, it's called. This is a Hitachi. Grex makes one that's super expensive. Sinco makes one. This is actually the only nailer that I've ever bought that I've been disappointed with. Found very little use for it. Shoots a very tiny nail that doesn't hold on very well. So, if you need to buy one, don't spend a lot of money on it. I don't think they're worth having. And the last thing I bought, and probably the thing that I use the most often now, is a little stapler with a quarter inch crown. This is a Porter Cable. Now when I bought this, I bought the Porter Cable because I thought it was relatively inexpensive and I didn't think I was going to use it that much. This thing has really lasted me, so I was surprised at how well it did. As a matter of fact, now I have two of them and the older one did not have a depth adjustment on it, but the newer one does, so I can adjust how deep that staple goes in. I always used to think the staples were a sign of cheapness, but Sometimes a staple is the only thing that will hold on to like a back in a cabinet or something like that. So the quarter inch stapler uh, works really well for, for thin wood where a pin nailer or a finish nailer is just going to let go. And it does shoot different lengths as well. So my recommendation on the stapler, if you're going to get one of these with a quarter inch crown, is a Porter Cable lasted me a long time. So finally, things have gotten a lot more affordable in the pneumatic tool world. If my first gun cost about almost $400 and now you can buy a lot of these for under $100. So uh, really worth your time to go out and make some purchases. Read a proverb this morning that said this, lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. So, let's get to work. You can buy some more tools. <laughs>